Hey, I'm Dave Jacobson. In this video, I'm going to be covering all the new features of Added the Keymaster 1.1. This will be a free update for anybody who currently owns version 1.0. Let's jump in. So the first thing you'll probably notice is that all the colors are displayed now with the quick labels. I find it's very helpful to actually see the colors in addition to the labels. This makes it a lot easier when applying them to my comps. If we move over to the full tab, you notice this interface looks a bit different now too. There used to be three output modules in here, but now you only see one. The biggest difference here is that Keymaster actually supports 32 output modules now. I think it's pretty unlikely most people will need 32 output modules, but that's what After Effects supports, and I don't want to hold anybody back from doing that. So the way this works now is if you want additional output modules, just go down to this little control box right here and hit the plus or the minus keys to add and remove output modules as needed. You can also just type in the number if you want. So I can actually type in 32, and now I've got 32 output modules. There's a scroll bar over here on the right side if you need more space. I'm going to go ahead and dial this back to 5. Also, another feature in here is notes. You can actually type in notes for each label so that when you're on the compact tab, you can just hold down the shift key and you can actually view the notes while mousing over the actual quick label button. This makes it a lot easier because you don't have to remember all the settings for each label. If we move back into the full tab, you'll also notice there's a clipboard on each individual output module. The clipboard was always down here, and it copies and pastes all of the output modules. But these actually allow you to individually copy the settings for each output module. So if I jump down to my sandstone multi-format, I can grab my Avid DNX setting just by hitting copy, and I can go to a new label, like Peach, and I can just hit paste. And now all those settings have been pasted in here. I can add more output modules if I want to, and I can paste it in there as well, and then make small changes to those. So it means there's a little bit less work when entering in the settings. Another new feature that I'm really excited to show you in QMaster is the Custom File Path Builder. To access that feature, you need to set your path type to Custom, and then you click on the little arrow next to your file path, and it's going to launch this completely new interface. This allows you to use variables to build your file paths and file names. So right now, by default, it starts you out with a relative file path. It shows you a preview of the file path down here. Let's add a date folder really quick. I'm going to place my cursor right here. I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to double click on year. I'm going to double click on month. And then I'm going to double click on date. And you'll notice that it's added all of these variables in here. I'm going to add a slash right here to separate that. And I'm going to add dots in between these variables to create my date. You'll notice as I'm typing all this in, the preview is updating in real time. I'd like to also add my comp resolution. So I'm going to do an underscore after my name, and I'm going to scroll up, and I'm going to double click on width and height. I'm going to place an X in between those two variables. And now you'll see it's adding the resolution at the end of my comp name. If you're working with image sequences, it's also possible to modify the image sequence folder. Once you're done, you would just click apply and close. Keymaster is going to handle versioning slightly differently than it did before. Previously, it was not possible to archive old renders without causing Qmaster to revert back to a V1 or whatever version numbers were missing. Now it just looks for the highest version number and disregards any earlier version numbers that are missing. This will be the new default behavior, however, you can revert back to the original behavior by adjusting the preference right here. Last but not least, Qmaster now supports render hogs. When prepping the queue, Qmaster can enable all the render hogs and disable all the substitutes. If you aren't familiar with this script, go to aescripts.com and check it out. RenderHogs makes heavy comps more responsive by disabling any unnecessary layers and effects until render time. That about covers everything. I hope these changes make the script even more helpful for everybody. I want to thank everyone who's purchased the script so far, and I also want to thank those of you who provided feedback. A lot of these new features are based on your feedback, and this update is going to be free for anybody who currently owns version 1.0. As always, please feel free to send any feedback my way. I really appreciate it. Thanks so much for watching.